social media addiction is a growing concern for many parents. In fact, according to Pew Research, 97% of U.S. teenagers go online every single day, and 46% say they're almost constantly online. It just ended up turning very, very severe. Caroline Koziel bravely sharing how social media affected her growing up. The Glastonbury native is among hundreds of plaintiffs, alleging the platforms are designed to hook users and can encourage addictive behavior in young people. Social media platforms are facing some major legal action for how they allegedly harm people's mental health. Yeah, they're... Let's be real here. Social media isn't all bad. It's where you can connect, share, and express yourself. You, me, and your teenage kids. But it's also a world where thumbs up can make you feel on top of the world. But a thumbs down is going to bring you crashing down. It's kind of love us asking, what's all this scrolling, liking, and commenting what does it do to our teams? So you're not alone if you're a bit worried. I'm worried too. Does social media negatively impact mental health? We have to remember that social media is not one thing. It's depending on who you're talking to, what content you're seeing, what functions you're interacting with, the like button, for instance. The problem is that social media is still a relatively new thing. Facebook may be 20 years old, but TikTok is not even 8 yet. So we can't really see the big picture yet, and maybe we won't until it's too late. So how is this whole social media playing out in terms of our kids' mental health? I mean, it's one thing to keep up with the latest dance craze or meme, but it's another when we start seeing changes in how our teens feel about themselves, right? A new study from the UK published in the journal eClinical Medicine found that 14-year-old girls who use social media more than five hours a day saw a 50% spike in depression symptoms. Teen boys saw a 35% jump. Researchers found that all teens who spent excessive time on social media got less sleep and exercise, which are directly related to mental health issues. In addition, those teens were more likely to be exposed to cyberbullying. But there are also things that we have to consider, silly things like Snapchat or TikTok filters. Most of these filters are just for messing around with, but the beauty filters are the worst. A study done by Dow found that 80% of girls have used filters to change their appearance with a beauty filter by the age of 13. I don't know why I'm doing the work when I could just put this filter on and just pretend. It's a whole lot of work for nothing. Nobody sees me anyway because that would be disappointing. That filter makes you feel very sad. Seeing other people's curated lives can start a kid down a tricky path of comparison. You know, why don't I look like that? Why isn't my life that exciting? Why didn't I get invited to that party? It hits hard, especially during these formative years when self-esteem is like a roller coaster at the best of times. But it's not just about feeling left out or not measuring up. There's this constant pressure to be on all the time, posting the right thing and getting enough likes. It's quite frankly exhausting. And when the phone goes quiet, that's a whole new level of anxiety. If you're not getting notifications, does that mean that you're not liked? Does that mean that you're being excluded, forgotten? For decades, there's been that Surgeon General's warning on packs of cigarettes. But this morning, for the first time, a new warning about something else. Social media and what it means for kids' mental health. Why now for this advisory? We're issuing this advisory to sound the alarm. Surgeon General Vivek Morthy says there's not enough evidence to show social media platforms are safe enough for kids and teens. We see rates of depression and anxiety and suicide and loneliness going up among young people. This is the defining public health issue of our time, youth mental health. Research shows 95% of teens are on social media. More than a third say they're on constantly. And teens spend an average of three and a half hours each day on these kinds of apps, something research shows can double the risk of experiencing symptoms of depression and anxiety. I'm not here to just dump all of this on you without a way forward. But understanding this link between social media use and mental health is important. We need to be on the lookout for signs that our teens might be struggling. So look for changes in mood, eating habits, withdrawal, maybe they're more irritable or their sleep is all over the place. Maybe they're not sleeping at all. Then there's the social media specific stuff. Are they obsessively checking their phone? Or do they seem overly vested in the number of likes or comments that they get? Maybe they're getting more secretive about their 
online life, turning the screens away whenever you're close. Internal research at companies like Facebook found the negative effects of social media are felt more among young people, specifically teenage girls. And many girls say that they know apps like Instagram are making them feel bad about themselves, but they can't stop using them. All of these could be signs that social media is playing a bigger role in their lives than we've expected. But remember, it's not about blaming them or us for that matter. It's about recognizing what is happening and starting to have those important conversations, you know, those one-to-one -one chats. So what can we do? We need to find out that sweet spot between online and real life for our teens. Because let's face it, banning social media isn't the answer. It's not the way. It's like telling them not to hang out with friends. Not gonna happen, right? Instead, let's talk about balance and boundaries. Discuss what's reasonable together. Trust me, they're more likely to stick to rules that they've had their own saying. Then set up the FamiSafe Parental Control app on your phones, which will help you to monitor and manage their screen time and online activities. But it's not about spying or invading their privacy. Think of it more like teaching them digital discipline, something you had to go through. You can set time limits, keep an eye on the apps that they are using, or even track their location, which is always super handy. But hey, I know this can feel overwhelming. You're thinking, great, one more thing to worry about. But here's the deal. It's not about 24 seven surveillance or turning it into some, turning yourself into some family detective. It's about being present, asking questions and showing that you are there for them. No judgment. It helps if you know what you're talking about too. So take a look at what your teens are following on Instagram or watch TikTok with them. Not to snoop, but to understand what they are seeing, what is influencing them. It's a whole world out there. And the better we understand it, the better we can guide them. Just make sure that you don't go down the TikTok rabbit hole. That's just so easy to do, to get sucked in. Try to lead by example. It's tough, but try to put your own phone down from time to time. Be present. It sends a powerful message when you can do it, when you can lead by example. And then there's the big one, encouraging offline activities. I know that's easier said than done, right? But it's about finding what clicks with them. Maybe it's sports, art, cooking, or just family movie nights. The goal is to show them that there's a whole world out there beyond just the screens. Now, I'm not saying that this is easy, because it's not. There's no magic formula here. But starting these conversations, setting up tech like FamiSafe and encouraging real life connections can make a big difference. Remember, this isn't about controlling your teen's life. It's about guiding them through it. Mistakes will happen, both on their part and yours. But that's okay. That's no problem at all. It's all part of the process. But I'm curious, have you noticed any changes in your teens that made you maybe pause for a second? Or maybe you've been through this and you've got tips and stories that you would like to share. Don't keep them to yourselves. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and stories. And hey, why not share this episode with somebody who would find it useful or could do with a bit of guidance? All right, until next time. Bye.